Did you know that the average car owner spends over $3,000 on cold start engine damage repairs? The crazy part is that up to 80% of these repairs are completely preventable. Mechanics won't tell you this, but most cold start damage happens because of simple mistakes they profit from fixing. But I'm here to change that. Today I will reveal six cold start secrets that mechanics don't want you to know. So stick around because at the end I'll share crucial techniques that could save your engine from thousands in repair bills. Now before I show you these cold start mistakes, you need to understand what actually happens inside your engine during a cold start. Don't worry, I'll keep this simple and interesting. Think of your engine like an athlete. Would you ask an athlete to run a marathon without warming up? Of course not. Your engine is the same. When it's cold, four main things happen. First, your engine oil becomes thick like honey in the fridge. This thick oil can't flow properly through your engine. In fact, at zero degree Fahrenheit, your oil moves about 10 times slower than it should. This means parts of your engine are literally running without proper lubrication for those first crucial seconds. Second, your battery becomes weaker in cold weather. It's like trying to run with stiff legs. That's why your car sometimes struggles to start on cold mornings. At degree Fahrenheit, your battery only has about half its normal power. This means your starter motor has to work twice as hard, using what little power it has left. Third, and here's something most people don't know about, your fuel doesn't atomize properly when it's cold. What does that mean? Well, your engine needs fuel to be sprayed in a fine mist to burn properly. In cold weather, it's more like throwing water balloons instead of using a spray bottle. This poor fuel atomization means your engine runs less efficiently and can even miss or sputter during those first few minutes. Fourth, ever notice how your engine runs at a higher RPM when you first start it in the cold? That's not a problem, it's actually your car protecting itself. Your engine will idle at around 1,500 RPM when cold, instead of the normal 800 RPM. This higher idle helps your engine warm up faster and prevents stalling while everything's still cold and stiff. It's like your engine doing its own warm-up exercises. And here's the really important part, all the metal parts in your engine are actually smaller when they're cold. Yes, you heard that right. Metal shrinks in cold temperatures and expands when hot. When you start your cold engine, these parts aren't fitting together properly yet. They're literally grinding against each other until they warm up and expand to their proper size. This is why those first 30 seconds to 5 minutes after starting your car are absolutely crucial. During this time, your engine is at its most vulnerable. Make the wrong moves here and you're looking at serious damage down the line. Before we move on to common mistakes, there's something really important about emissions and your catalytic converter that most people don't know about. You know that expensive piece of equipment in your exhaust system, your catalytic converter? Well, during cold starts, it's basically useless until it warms up. Here's why this matters. When your engine is cold, it uses extra fuel to run. We call this running rich. This extra fuel isn't great for your catalytic converter. Think of your converter like a filter that needs to be hot to work properly. When it's cold, all that extra fuel can actually damage it. I've seen catalytic converters fail after just a few years because of poor cold start habits. And trust me, replacing one can cost you anywhere from $800 to $3,000. Now, let's talk about the mistakes that I see people make almost every day. These aren't just minor issues, they're engine killers, and I've seen them cause thousands of dollars in damage. The first big mistake, revving your engine right after starting it. I get it, some people love that engine sound in the morning, but here's what's actually happening. Remember those cold, contracted metal parts I mentioned? When you rev a cold engine, these parts are literally banging against each other. That sound you might hear, that clicking or tapping noise, that's called piston slap. And it's basically your engine crying for help. The second mistake I see every day, letting your car idle for too long to warm it up. Modern fuel-injected engines are designed to warm up through light driving, not idling. Let me explain why. 
When your engine is cold and idling, your car's computer system commands a rich fuel mixture. That means more fuel than normal is being injected into the cylinders. It does this to help maintain a stable idle and prevent stalling. But here's the problem. At idle, your engine isn't working hard enough to reach its optimal operating temperature. It's like trying to warm up by standing still instead of walking. During extended idling, this extra fuel doesn't burn completely because the engine is too cold. Some of it can seep past your piston rings and mix with your engine oil, diluting it. Here's what I tell my customers. Start your car, wait about 30 to 60 seconds for the oil to circulate. You can watch your RPMs drop a bit during this time. Then drive gently. Keep the revs under 3000 RPM for the first few minutes. This gentle driving helps your engine warm up faster and more evenly than idling ever could. Plus, it ensures better oil circulation and more complete fuel combustion. Here's mistake number three, and it's one that kills engines over time, making too many short trips without letting your engine reach full operating temperature. Let me explain what really happens, and I see the damage from this almost every week in my shop. When your engine runs, one of the byproducts of combustion is water vapor. In a fully warmed up engine running at about 195 to 220 degree Fahrenheit, this moisture gets vaporized and exits through your exhaust system. But during short trips, your engine never reaches these temperatures. That moisture, it stays trapped in your oil, your crankcase, and your exhaust system. Even worse, in cold weather, that moisture combines with combustion byproducts to create acids that literally eat away at your engine internals. Mistake number four is using the wrong oil viscosity. This is huge in cold weather. Using oil that's too thick is like trying to pour maple syrup through a straw. It just doesn't flow well. Your engine needs oil immediately at startup, and if it's too thick, some parts won't get lubricated properly. And here's mistake number five, one that I see destroying turbocharged engines way too often. It's about how you shut down your engine. And trust me, this directly affects your next cold start. Let me explain what really happens inside your turbocharger. Your turbo spins at incredibly high speeds. We're talking up to 200,000 RPM and can reach temperatures over 1,000 degree Fahrenheit. The only thing keeping this precision part alive is a constant flow of oil. When you've been driving, especially at highway speeds or under heavy acceleration, that turbo is running extremely hot. If you immediately shut off your engine, here's the problem. The oil flow stops instantly, but the turbo is still spinning and hot. What happens next? That trapped oil in your turbo starts to cook because there's no more fresh, cool oil flowing through. That oil breaks down and forms carbon deposits on your turbo's bearings and shaft. <clears throat> These carbon deposits don't just sit there quietly. During your next cold start, when oil flow is already limited by cold temperatures, these deposits act like sandpaper on your turbo's precision components. The solution is simple. After highway driving or any spirited acceleration, let your car idle for about 30 to 60 seconds before shutting it off. This gives the turbo time to slow down while fresh oil continues to flow through it, protecting those crucial components. Here's a mistake that even some mechanics don't fully understand. Cranking your heater to full blast the moment you start your cold engine. Let me explain exactly why this hurts your engine's warm-up process. Your car's heating system works by borrowing heat from your engine's coolant. Inside your dashboard, there's a small radiator called a heater core. When you blast your heater, you're forcing cold coolant through this heater core at maximum speed. Here's the problem. During a cold start, your engine needs to retain heat to warm up quickly and efficiently. Think of it like this. Your engine's optimal operating temperature is around 195 to 220 degree Fahrenheit. At this temperature, everything works perfectly. Your fuel burns efficiently, your oil flows properly, and all metal parts are expanded to their correct tolerances. When you force cold coolant through the heater core at full blast, you're actually pulling heat away from the engine block before it can reach these temperatures. 
For the first five minutes, either keep the heater off or run it on low. Let your temperature gauge move up to at least the quarter mark before turning up the heat. Let me tell you exactly how to start your car properly in cold weather. For modern fuel-injected engines, here's what's happening. When you turn your key, multiple sensors are sending data to your car's engine control module. They're measuring air temperature, engine temperature, and more. Your ECM uses this data to calculate the perfect air-fuel mixture for that cold start. It knows to inject extra fuel because cold fuel doesn't atomize well, and it adjusts the injection timing to compensate for the cold, thick oil. When you press the gas pedal during this process, you're actually fighting against these carefully calculated adjustments. Now, if you're driving an older carbureted engine, the process is different. These cars might need one gentle pump of the gas pedal before starting. This manually activates the accelerator pump, which sprays a small amount of fuel into the carburetor. More than one pump and you're oversaturating the air-fuel mixture. Now, here's the important part what to do in those first crucial minutes. Let the car idle for about 30 seconds to a minute. This gives the oil time to circulate. Think of it like warming up before exercise. You wouldn't start running at full speed right away, right? After that initial warm up, start driving, but keep it gentle. Keep your RPMs under 2,500 for the first few minutes. Your engine temperature gauge might show warm, but don't be fooled, your oil temperature takes longer to catch up. I usually tell people to drive like there's a cup of coffee on the dashboard for the first 5-10 minutes. For those of you battling severe winter conditions, especially temperatures below minus 38 degree Fahrenheit, a block heater isn't just an option hits essential engine protection. Let me explain exactly what a block heater does and why it's so crucial in extreme cold. A block heater is an electrical heating element that's installed directly into your engine block, usually through a freeze plug port or threaded into a coolant passage. When plugged in, it keeps your engine's coolant from freezing and, more importantly, maintains your oil at a temperature where it can actually flow. Here's what happens when you use a block heater. It maintains your engine coolant at about 85 degree Fahrenheit, which in turn keeps the surrounding metal and oil warm. This means when you start your engine, your oil viscosity is already in a safe range for proper flow. Without a block heater in these temperatures, you're asking your starter to turn an engine filled with oil that's nearly the consistency of tar while trying to compress air that's so cold it's lost most of its energy potential. And if you're wondering about those remote starters, they're fine to use, but don't let your car idle for more than a minute or two before driving. Remember, a car warms up much faster when it's being driven gently than when it's just sitting there idling. Here's mistake number six, and it's one that I see destroying automatic transmissions almost every week in my shop. That is, not giving your transmission proper warm-up time in cold weather. Think about your automatic transmission. It's a complex system of hydraulic passages, some thinner than a human hair with clutch packs and valve bodies that all depend on transmission fluid flowing properly. In cold weather, especially below 20 degree Fahrenheit, this fluid becomes extremely thick. When you immediately shift into drive and take off, this thick cold fluid can't flow properly through those tiny passages in your valve body. Your transmission's clutch packs aren't getting the right hydraulic pressure they need. This causes something called harsh engagement. That clunk you might feel when shifting into drive, or that delay before the transmission engages. Even worse, in extremely cold temperatures below 10 degree Fahrenheit, the rubber seals in your transmission can actually shrink. When this happens, transmission fluid bypasses where it should be going, leading to slipping or complete loss of gear engagement. I saw this happen with a 2005 Subaru Outback. The transmission would slip into neutral during cold starts until everything warmed up. Let's talk about fuel quality, something that can make or break your cold starts. You might think all gas is the same, but in winter, that's not true at all. Those cheaper gas stations you see, they often use fuel with fewer winter additives. Here's what happens. When temperatures drop below freezing, low quality fuel can actually start to freeze in your fuel lines. Yeah, you heard that right. It's like trying to drink a milkshake through a frozen straw. 
That's why I always tell my customers to stick with major brand gas stations during winter. And if you're driving a diesel, listen up because this is important. Diesel engines are different beasts. They use something called compression ignition, which means they need more time to warm up properly. Those glow plugs in your diesel engine, they're like little space heaters that need time to work. Give your diesel about 30 seconds longer than you would a gas engine before driving off. Trust me, your engine will thank you for it. Now, let's get into your winter maintenance checklist. I'm going to tell you exactly what you need to do before the cold hits. First, get your coolant tested, and I don't just mean checking if it's full. You need to know its freeze point. Next, get your battery load tested. A battery can show 12 volts and still fail when you need it most. A proper load test tells you how much life your battery really has left. Your fuel system needs a thorough inspection too. That means checking your fuel filter, fuel lines, and making sure there's no water in your fuel system. If you found this information helpful, do me a quick favor, hit that subscribe button on our channel. I've got tons more videos coming up about preventing expensive car repairs and maintaining your car the right way. Got your own cold start stories or questions? Drop them in the comments below. I love hearing your experiences and I try to answer as many questions as I can. Thanks for watching and remember, take care of your car during those cold starts and it'll take care of you for years to come.